The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. So going with my theme of the less common re repair application procedures, uh, I also want to introduce you guys to methyl methacrylates used in a flood code application. Now this is not as unusual as the pre-placed aggregate repair. This is becoming more popular, at least in our uh, area of the country. The methacrylates are used uh, in, in locations or in applications where you might also use an epoxy as a flood coat. But methacrylates have some distinct advantages and a few disadvantages, which we'll talk about today. So uh, here's, a, here's a photograph of, of installing methacrylates. You can see that they're very low viscosity, similar to epoxies. Uh, and they're, the advantage of, of a methacrylate is that it can be used to seal and structurally heal some cracks. The newer formulations are typically done in a two-part application, although methacrylates chemically are three-part applications, and they, they pre-mix two parts. And the reason for that, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the methacrylates, if you mix the, the two parts together in the wrong, or the mix the parts together in the wrong order for the three parts, they can actually react and explode and become very dangerous. So the newer ones are pre-mixed such that you can't really do that. There's two types of methacrylates. There's the high uh, molecular weight methacrylates. Those are more used in the structural applications. And there's reactive, applica reactive methacrylates, and those are used uh, when you really need a quick turnaround, and you see those a lot, uh, particularly in flooring applications. As I mentioned, they're similar to epoxies, and uh, they, they can penetrate. You don't need to pump them or force them, and they'll bond the, the cracks. So just a review. I think most of us are familiar with this, but what is it that actually causes concrete to crack? What are you looking for in order to repair with <laughs> methacrylates? Um, clearly, you've got the corrosion of steel, freeze-thaw damage, sulfate attack, alkali, ag aggregate reactions, you know, ASR and the etronite. And then you've got uh, sometimes we just don't have the right application or the right construction in the first place. And so sometimes you have the wrong mix design, a little too much water cement, a little too high of a water cement ratio, uh, or some other things. On the right is a, is a photograph there that, that I took from this uh, Flowcrete America website um, where uh, it's a methyl methacrylate floor, flooring installed at Johnson Space Center. You can see how attractive and how durable this material can be in a flooring application. Uh, in a structural application, as I mentioned, you can, you can actually structurally bond some, some small cracks. Um, you can, you can seal the slab like you would with an epoxy. You can improve the wear. And you can actually get a structural repair. Now, you, the, the, the warning that I've got on the slide there is that you really do need to talk to a structural engineer if you're, if you're thinking that you're going to fully repair a crack just because it's, it's difficult by gravity alone to be able to get the material full depth of the crack and fully seal it. So when would you use it? Obviously, this material is, is a very low viscosity, so you really can't use it on any sort of vertical or overhead surface. You can only use it on horizontal surfaces, but it can be used on slope surfaces such as a parking garage ramp. In fact, that's where I see it, at least in our area, used most frequently. Uh, you've got a ramp that is being used to access a parking garage, and you need to be able to get this thing uh, coated, repaired, and open to service very, very quickly. These types of materials can be, you can close down a, a garage, say, after the morning rush, and, uh, uh, or a ramp, or half of a ramp for, before, or after the morning rush, open up just one lane. You, as, you have some flaggers so that you can go both ways, and you can install the, uh, 
the methacrylate and it can cure out and you can open it up again before the heavy traffic leaving the garage in the afternoon. So it, it's very, very good in that method. That, that the amount of time that it takes to cure is, is very short. Uh, similarly, that's why you see it on so many bridge decks, that kind of a thing, is that the quick time from application to reopening is, is a huge advantage in those types of applications. Obviously, you can't use it to, although you can structurally repair cracks, you can't use it for anything that's caused by a repair that's ongoing. So if you've got steel corrosion that's continuing or if you've got ASR, you can't, it won't fix that problem. The, it, it can be slick, so you want to think about it when you're using, uh, when it would be high traffic or, or high speeds, but you can put some aggregate into the material to address those issues. It is very frequently used on bridge decks and garage ramps, as I mentioned. Um, it, it is, if the cracks are moving, you, it does have some ability to, avoid, to accept some movement, but the movement is very, very little. And so if you've got any sort of real movement across the crack, it's not going to accommodate that. Uh, and there, I've got some, some information there at the very bottom that you can resist movements typically only 5 to 10 percent. Uh, just to give you a feel, uh, a, a urethane will typically resist 25 percent of a crack width in movement, a silicone frequently 50 percent. Because you're not routing the cracks out typically for this, 5 or 10 percent of a crack that's maybe a sixteenth of an inch wide is just not very much. So it's, it's, it's really not very effective for moving cracks. So similar to many of the other presentations today, this is going to, my next couple slides are going to walk you through how it's actually done. You need to uh, clean the slab, remove uh, grease, dust, paint, anything else that might potentially con contaminate it. You can shot blast or sand blast to a CSP3. You may remember the, uh, the chips that ICRI puts out. A CSP3 is not a very heavy, uh, a surface profile, so it doesn't require a lot. You want to clean the deeper cracks out with some, some compressed air, and uh, we really don't recommend using, using water blasting. It's usually not enough to create the surface profile that you need, and it, it can interfere with the application of the, uh, the methacrylate flood coat. So there are, as I mentioned, there's two types of methacrylates. They're re reactive and high molecular weight. Both can be used. Reactive will get you on it quicker. High molecular weight is better for structural applications. Uh, you need to think about what the temperatures are when you're installing this material. Because it sets so quickly, it can flash on you. Uh, so if you're dealing with hot temperatures, you really do need to think about that. It's best to apply in a cooler time of the day for that reason, and as I mentioned before, you can install some aggregate to improve the traction. Probably one of the bigger issues with this particular material is it has a very, very strong odor. It smells much like rotten eggs, and it can be overwhelming. Uh, a contractor on one of my projects was installing this on a parking deck where there was, uh, the ramp was going in and there was kind of a, a building next door and the, the workers were installing some glass on the building next door. And uh, it was a beautiful Friday afternoon, sunny in Denver, and these guys started to feel very bad because of the, the smell and they all had to go home. Now how much of that had to do with the smell and how much of it had to do with the fact that it was a beautiful Friday afternoon, I don't know. But they, they really, this is a, a, a consideration. It's certainly a consideration if you're doing it indoors. You need good ventilation. Uh, the odors are strong. They're non-toxic. It's, it's not a problem there, but they, they do have a, a, a distinct odor, and it's quite strong. So what equipment? Uh, we saw earlier you need the, the shot blast or sand blast equipment, compressed air for cleaning out the cracks. You need some, some aggregate for filling the cracks. You need to proportion the material properly, so you need the buckets, mixing paddle, some power. 
typical application is a, a gallon of methacrylate will cover about 100 to 150 square feet, and you roll it out like we saw in the first in the first slide. Raised cleats on the footwear are a good idea, just like they would be if you were working with any other sort of floor coating, and the proper safety equipment. We need to have an MSDS, protective clothing, safety glasses and gloves, goes without saying, full fa face rep respirators, uh, especially in any sort of enclosed area just because of the odor, eye wash facilities available. Notifying occupants is really important. Certainly if you're doing anything indoors or what the contractor should have done on the ramp that I referred to earlier is let the other subs know that this material was going to be there, what time they were going to be working. It, it actually occurs over a relatively short period of time because it cures so quickly. So if the contractor would have just simply said, well, let's not have workers in this area between the hours of one and two, they probably would have been fine, but that communication didn't happen. I, meant, I, I mentioned earlier about the potential for explosion. I, again, most manufacturers don't make the three-part. They make, they pre-mix it, but you can never mix the catalyst and the promoter together to, uh, with because it will have an exothermic reaction and will explode, and just in general follow the instructions of the manufacturer. We obviously recommend a pre-construction meeting uh, to go through the uh, what needs to be done, particularly with regard to the safety, particularly with regard to the odor, particularly with regard to what needs to be closed down and how long it needs to be closed down, and get all of that information coordinated. So here's the procedure. Shot blaster, sand blast, CSP3, compressed air, seal the bottom of the surface because it is low viscosity. If there's a full depth crack, it can go all the way through. Pre-fill the cracks. With a, with a resin, flat squeegee or roll it out, 150, 100 to 150 square feet per gallon. Uh, remove the, any excess, uh, a second coat may be necessary if it's, if it's thicker or if the concrete is particularly porous. And then after applying the final coat, after about 20 minutes, you can apply the aggregate. And it really doesn't take long an hour for the reactive material, three to four hours for the high molecular weight is all it takes before you can reopen it. Checking the repairs is fairly straightforward. Just pay attention to how much material you're using over how many square feet. That'll give you a good idea because it will actually absorb into the material. It's, it's really hard to, to use a you know wet thickness gauge or something like that, but that's really what you're, you just, the paying attention to how much material you use is, is really the best way to do it. And that's it for methacrylates. So hopefully I've given you another, another thing you can consider to use when the application is right. Many times epoxies make more sense, but uh, there are times when it, when it makes more sense for a methacrylate. Just a quick question on the surface. Uh, can this be applied on wet surfaces or damp surfaces, or is it like epoxy where you can't do that? No, you can't do it. Okay. That's, that was the reason why... I had suggested that you don't want to use the water blasting. Uh, it does need to be dry. Yes, sir. So the, the slide that showed the ingredients listed a, a sand for filling the cracks. And then in the repair procedure, it said right. pre-fill with the resin. Right. Uh, when does the sand get used to pre-fill those cracks? This has been my experience anyway, is when the cracks are, are wider than say about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch, then what we will do is we will go in and pre-fill those cracks with sand. And then this is going to sound very unsophisticated, but it's just the way I've seen the local contractors do it, is they'll take like one of those old ketchup bottles that you used to see at the old delis, and they'll fill that with the resin, and they'll just go through and pre-fill those cracks that have the sand in them. And then once that's in, then they go over everything. That's the way I've seen it done. Yes. I, I presume that you're talking about uh, water blasting hydro demolition, right? Hydro demolition, you, you could do it, but you have to let it get completely dry. So we really don't, we, we've not seen that typically well, done. And you don't need yeah. that level of, but of you have surface profile. A lot of surfaces that have 
considerable deterioration. You need to use hydro, I mean hydro demolition. Then you could use sandblasting to take off some of the micro cracking. Then you can use it. Sure, you could in that application. Thank you.